Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flitter Mouse. I'm assembling a brass tipped mini arrow for a shotgun. And it's got to be one of the more complicated rounds we've ever tested. Although these probably look like they came straight from a factory, they're just prototypes and only a handful of them were ever made. This 3D printed base is designed to distribute the energy evenly across the back of the arrow flights. And the purpose of the Sabos is to fill the space in the barrel and of course to guide the assembly straight down the barrel. But they're also there to support that heavy brass arrowhead. And that G-Shock is very strong and without those Sabos the shaft would probably distort and maybe break. Most of the wadding has been modified and we just have a power piston, two rubber discs and a Teflon disc. Well, let's get started. Okay, we're able to load it right in there, it, it, despite it being long. That's a low power one. Right. We want to save this one for last. The other ones fail. This one has ha only half the powder in it. Ooh. You stabbed the leg. Okay, so Sorry. we're going to shoot at the ballistic loaf. <laughs> ballistic <laughs> loaf. Hit it, Darren. Whoa. <laughs> we only had three of these rounds, and really I didn't know what we were going to be getting ourselves into. Would they be accurate? Would they even survive being shot out of a shotgun? For the first couple shots, we set the block only about 15 yards away. The whole time we were filming, all I'm thinking is, Tim spent a lot of time making these things, especially those 3D printed components. So I was exercising a little bit of caution here because we only had three shots to get this right. What you have to understand is when we're filming this, we have no idea what's going on. It's not until we get home and review the high-speed footage that we see what's happening. Put it in there. <laughs> you gotta force it. The high brass. Get oh. a hammer. <laughs> Hit it right here. Oh man, that it busted the wood up. It broke in half. Okay. It, this was behind the gel, and that arrow, we don't know where the brass part went, the threads broke. But there's the arrow, we're, we'll try to dig that out. It is very stuck in there. That's how tough that Delrin is. I might be able to dig it out. Ugh, maybe not. Pour it up. It'll come out. In the first shot, we used a basically just a one ounce target load shotgun shell, and it you know with full power. And this one, we used a Rio high brass round with little more power. The round was traveling even faster, which was really a mistake. And of course, there's several problems going on here. First, the round was going too fast; couldn't really see what's happening even if you look at it frame by frame the next problem is all the components of this except for maybe the brass arrowhead it's all black you got the black shaft the black sabos the black base piece um, black uh, rubber washers you know part of the wadding system and it's hard to distinguish what's what in this video and of course, because this round is so complex and kind of works in stages, just not enough distance was given to allow it to blossom out and, and do its thing. Okay, final mini arrow. Whenever you're ready. Oh, ah. pretty accurate. And also, it wasn't that uh, low power. Yeah, that low power helped a lot. That was oh, that was the low power one. But fortunately not all is lost. There's a happy ending here. We moved the target back to about 30 yards and this has given the round plenty of space to function. You can see the Sabo pieces separate perfectly and then the base piece fall off the back and then the dart at this point is flying by itself at a high velocity. The 3D printed base piece smacked into the table and just shattered. The dart 
stuck into the wooden table, but the brass tip continued through the table and hit the sand behind it. For such a complicated round, this thing worked beautifully and it really blew me away when I watched this footage. If I had a time machine and it could go back and redo this, I would probably take all those black components and paint them all different colors so we could kind of distinguish what's going on a little better. The good thing about making mistakes is you definitely learn from them and you remember them much longer. I saw something hit the, yeah. the sand straight behind it. Use a magnet to find the brass piece, huh? So right here. Oh, he went through the thick wood there, too. You, you magnetic brass. Wow. It was flying straight. Gave it a little more distance this time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. You're probably curious how Tim made these things on his crazy robot machine. In this video, he is making the brass arrowhead. And besides crazy shotgun rounds and crazy rifle rounds, he does other stuff too, so be sure to check him out. Thanks for watching.